Hey, I pulled from David One. This is Sports News. I'm Joe Borg. This is going to be the breakdown of the Bakersfield Condors sweeping the Abbotsford Canucks in the postseason as they were able to take down the Canucks in a game in game one. As we get right into it, but post, please continue to subscribe down below or up above to keep us growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. In the first game, they deserved a lot more. Their coach was back, was spot on, I should say. Where Schalk saying they deserve more in that game, they clearly did. Skinner played a solid game, only let in one goal. But Spencer Martin deserves an MVP of the series, even in a losing effort. Because if it wasn't for him, there's no shot in heck that that game was getting to overtime. But Colson was able to have a nice play from Rampol to Breeze Bus that caused Stuart Skinner to be scrambling a bit as Colson was able to tuck it home in front. But then Griffith, Mr. Clutchman on the spot from Coldis and Dylan Holloway, one of the top prospects of the Oilers, was able to get it done on a snipe. And then from Moraldi, one of the great veterans in the AHL, to Schaller, another solid AHL veteran. Then Hamblin was able to score the cut in front and get the jacket for the game as well. So this was a game... It was interesting because it looked like the Canucks were going to be able to hang on and win a game that, honestly, they really didn't fully deserve to win because they did not play the better hockey. Uh, the, the Bakersfield Condors clearly did. And in the end, the team that deserved it the most came out, where the only reason the Nucks were in it was because Spencer Martin was clearly a star of this game, only letting in two goals in 66-06 of action, and is developed really nicely this season. Seth Griffith, a star in the AHL level, deserves the praise he gets. And then James Hamblin, obviously, being able to cut in front there, the beautiful cut to the net. Not the only chance, it was about 50 million, obviously that's an over-exaggeration, but probably at least five good net front chances by them in this game as the youngster Hamblin, who's developing very nicely as, I believe if my memory serves me correctly, an undrafted kid that they seem to spot really nicely there, the Edmonton Oilers organization and the Condors, that he's developing really nicely for them. And if he keeps going at that rate, then why the hell would he not be able to potentially at least get an opportunity at the next level? But as we move into the second game where the stars of the first game were, again, Hamblin, Griffith, and of course you got to give it to Spencer Martin after having a great game. In the second game, they were finally able to find, after a great shot by, Sheldon, by both Sheldons, great shots by both Sheldons, assisted by Baton and Rathbone, Dries was able to score, and then Ren Paul was able to pound one home as well, assisted by Bacolson and Dowling. They were able to have find some cracks in the armor, but not even cracks in the armor of Spencer Martin, just be able to get the ugly but good goals as the puck bounces to Brad on the spot for Brad Malone's goal. Cracknell had a great job to crashing the net, the assistant captain, to get his goal there. And then Cooper Morality on the winning goal, another great net front play by guess who shooting the puck? James Hamblin having a great series, being able to set that one up where I would say you have to give the star to the goal scorers, but Hamblin has to be closely there generating chances throughout that game as well. And then being the guy that gets the assist on the beautiful shot to be able to lead to Morality's rebound goal. Both goaltenders played spectacular in this series from Spencer Martin to Stuart Skinner. Stuart Skinner's only off play was Really, that play, he got his card sprawling a bit, but that was also a really nice setup as well to get the goal to Vasily Bacolz and from pre breeze bus and Al Ron Paul in that first game. So, I don't really look at it anything sideways of that. I thought Skinner had a great first round. I thought the guys you want to see do great in the Moralities, the Schaulers, the Griffiths did fantastic from the veteran standpoint as well. And then you saw the Caldices, the Holloways. Uh, Noah Phillip, Philippe Berglins. You saw the other guys on the roster that were the depth guys you want to see do well as well. Crack, no get a goal, obviously. So it's nice for Bakersfield not to just be relying on their vets and their top kahunas, yeah, even if they're not the veterans as well, but they are able to get it through and through as well. And James Hamblin looks to be a man on a mission after having to kill the regular season to continue to prove it in the postseason. So that's going to be key for them going forward. But hell of a series, they get an A for this series because in game one, I mean, they deserved a much better fate much sooner. It took to Seth Griffith's Mr. Clutch goal and Hamlin's cut goal to win it, but that was because Spencer Martin was a freaking brick house. And then in game two, they were able to find some cracks in his armor and be able to get it through where it was just a battle of the two Sheldons against Bakersfield in that game as two Sheldons, Dries and Ron Paul, the Sheldon duo, scored for Abbotsford, uh, probably the best duo in the history of Sheldons. And then you were able to have the three goals from Cracknell cutting again, the great Brad on the spot goal, and then Cooper Morality 
who was able to get the rebound goal to win it. Absolutely fantastic series. Great job by Bakersfield. As now they get some days off, as Brad Malone said in his post-game press conference, as Bakersfield Condors, they, they do a great job on YouTube with the Bakersfield TV. Now he gets some time to golf. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below. Above these views, which is to keep us growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. Have a great, safe day, everybody. And stay safe out there.